record. Okay, so now that we've started the recording, uh, so this webinar is about uh, a purchase order process. Um, in particular, we've done many of these recently, uh, very wide variation of PO processes. And what we've learned is that the business requirements that customers have vary widely. Um, and so I uh, wanted to, in this webinar, talk about how um, some, of the, some of the business requirements that we encounter and how we address them. We don't certainly won't have time to cover everything. There are a wide variety of business processes, particular purchase order business processes. Um, but of course, uh, any specific questions we'd be happy to answer. Uh, firstly, in the, go, in the control panel, when you're attending GoToWebinar, there should be a questions tab here. You probably won't see all the tabs in there, but there should be a questions one. Please feel free to type your questions in and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can. <clears throat> I've already started the recording. Uh, very quick agenda. Um, I'm gonna do a really, really quick overview uh, of uh, Frevo. Uh, it, this is gonna take five minutes and then really jump into a demo with some examples and uh, um, hopefully we'll have some time for a few questions at the end if, if, uh, if that's necessary, if, if there are any. So real quick, uh, jumping right in, what do we do? Um, our customers use our product uh, with its simple, very easy to use designers. They're very visual, drag and drop to create uh, forms and automate their everyday processes. Uh, so things like purchase orders and employee onboardings, uh, but also travel reimbursements, uh, expense reports, a lot of student-related uh, forms and workflows, transcript requests, things of that sort. Uh, in the healthcare space, patient uh, referrals, for example, um, and, and sales orders. So essentially, these are things that customers, uh, so businesses, colleges, schools, uh, people in these institutions do them on a routine, everyday basis. Uh, typically consists of a form that's filled out by person one, and then at that form is often routed uh, between multiple people. So, for example, to a manager, maybe conditionally to a CFO or the vice president for further approval or signatures or comments. In some cases, these forms and workflows are also routed outside the organization to, for example, a sales order might be routed to a client for signature. Uh, this might be a person outside the company who doesn't have an account and so on and so forth. Uh, the idea here is that these are um, the tools that we provide are very easy to use. They're 100% visual, drag and drop, point and click, and anybody in the organization can perform this, um, uh, this dragging and dropping and pointing and clicking to create forms that work, that meet real business requirements, route, route them around in workflows, without the need to hire expensive IT resources, and also do so in a matter of days. Uh, so we don't, we're not talking about uh, very expensive projects that are staffed by large teams and then take months and months of time. We're talking about much smaller scale projects for everyday processes. So that's what we do. Uh, in many cases, by the way, uh, customers have been, obviously they're doing this, they're onboarding employees and they are processing purchase orders and sales orders and things of the sort, but they're doing this today by, for example, emailing an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document around. And of course, there are many cases, situations where people still use what, what we'll call sneakerware, uh, which really literally is taking pieces of paper, putting them in envelopes and, and walking them around to their manager or to the VP to get a, get a, a necessary signature. Uh, we'll go into the disadvantages of doing that. There's a lot of content on our blog and our website on that, and I'm sure you're familiar with the advantages of uh, electronic forms and automated workflows over email and paper. So that's what we do. Um, the, uh, per, the purchase order actually happens to be the number one workflow that our customers automate. And this is just an example. Uh, there are many, many, many different kinds of PO workflows that, uh, that we've seen in our customer base. Uh, typically though, an employee creates some sort of purchase requisition, the manager will re review and approve. Perhaps the VP or the CFO may need to approve it uh, under certain conditions. Finance department then creates the PO based on the approved requisition. Sometimes that is created out of band as a PDF document and emailed externally. Uh, it may be sent to the supplier electronically. Yeah, supplier maybe needs to sign it. Sometimes in, that does create a binding contract. 
then there's then you receive the ordered goods and invoice reconcile it send the payment and file the documents away for record keeping. and then this is just an example there are as i mentioned many many variations we've got a lot of customers doing this uh not not just po uh, many names here that you i'm sure will recognize uh universities uh other organizations um uh, a couple of schools as well, Boston Public Schools and Escondido are both large school districts. So uh, other other customers and other companies are already using successfully using Frevo for this as well as a variety of other forms and, and workflows within their organization. So as I mentioned, what are they using it for? Purchase order is the most common one. Employee onboarding is another really common one. Travel claims, expense reports, absence records. Permission forms is another area, in, particularly in the education space. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with uh, receiving a permission form or signing a permission form or uh, even taking a permission form when, you, when we were a little bit younger to uh, get permission to go on a field trip or participate in athletic activities or media nowadays especially in this electronic age, media consent forms, and so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of customers also use Frevo for our powerful database or SQL uh, integration capabilities. That's another area in which uh, we have uh, some exceptional capabilities. And as uh, is common, most businesses, colleges, universities, everybody's got a SQL database. It's got information and data in it that uh, is very useful. Essentially, if you have a form or workflow that can connect to that data, uh, it's simply more useful. Um, and that's why a lot of people use it. Transportation is another area. Uh, so this, this specifically refers to, for example, in, in, in a school where you have busing requests. Um, so these things are sent out on an annual basis to parents and then maybe thousands and thousands of parents. Uh, and then the reminders that go on uh, behind the scenes to get all the information in trying to make the, the busing system more efficient. Uh, it's amazing how much money a single school bus costs. Uh, and even if you can save even one, um, it makes a big difference. Sorry about that. Um, and why do they use Frevo? Um, uh, a lot of cases it's because it helps them meet real business requirements. So as I mentioned, it does have the tools uh, that Frevo provides are simple. They're very visual. Anyone can use them without these large budgets and large staffing. Uh, but at the same time, it really can meet real business requirements. And what do I mean by that? Well, we've got some pre-built templates that I'll show you. But the form designer, uh, you know, every workflow, as I mentioned, has these forms. But you can drag and drop to create really sophisticated forms. Uh, in the real world, these things tend to be dynamic. So, for example, I might have certain sections that only need to be filled out under certain conditions. So if I enter... If I answer yes to this particular question, the section below it becomes required, otherwise it's optional. Uh, performing calculations, uh, automatically populating fields, so on and so forth. All that dynamic capability is very easy to do visually in Frevo. Uh, we talked about routing the workflow, routing this form around for approvals. Uh, that's also visual uh, drag and drop with Frevo. Integration, um, SQL is one example, but certainly SharePoint, a lot of companies have SharePoint. Um, and then really we see a lot of people, a lot of customers um, integrating with their existing content management or document management system in order to save the data uh, data and from the form and the generated documents into an ECM system electronically properly indexed, no OCRing or corrections or, or any sort of data entry involved. Um, the other aspect is authentication. Most organizations, you have Active Directory, LDAP, some sort of uh, existing authentication mechanism, and Frevo supports mechanisms to use, integrate with it, so you don't have to remember a separate login or password, but also we have single sign-on through, through uh, technologies like SAML uh, and a variety of providers. Mobile is obviously super important nowadays and with Frevo the good news is it just works on all, kind, all mobile devices smartphones tablets as well as desktop computers it's just built in and of course as with everything in Frevo you can customize it to meet your specific needs we mentioned PDF generation briefly uh, most common use case for that actually is in employee onboarding scenarios where when you onboard an employee you will need to generate specific documents um, so perhaps a federal and a state W-4, a federal I-9, uh, documents of that nature that cannot be, um, you, know, you have to use the specific federal form for doing that. 
And with Trevo, you can have the user enter the data once, sign once electronically, and generate a PDF W4, for example, with all the data from the form, including the signature that's ready to be submitted to the government. And then finally, reports, uh, operational reports in particular, these things allow you to monitor your workflows to, to uh, generate statistics about them and understand uh, where your bottlenecks are, how you can optimize the workflow, how you can, how you can make the system and overall your operations much more efficient. So those are some of the capabilities that Frevo brings to the table. There's just a, the list is unending though. There are, there are a large number of things that uh, over and above that we can help you with, um, but you know, we'll focus on these for, the, for this webinar given the amount of time that we have. So now let's take a quick look at some examples over here. So the first thing is to start with pre-built templates. So uh, Frevo, when you log into Frevo uh, in, in the, in our uh, cloud account, in your cloud account, uh, you'll notice that there are a number of pre-built templates available to you. Now, these templates are also available on our website. So if you go to our website and then you go to, for example, solutions purchase order process and click on view samples, right on our website here, you'll see that there are a number of free purchase order templates available to you. Uh, you can try a simple purchase order process that routes for approvals. Here's one uh, where we, you can, you know, you can at least try out a PO process integrated with SQL, uh, a form, uh, and a variety of these templates. Um, some of these templates can be simply installed by you, uh, into your cloud account with a single click. You can also download them for uh, on-premise use. And if you really want, you can even download an Excel variant of that template. So minimally, you can compare the advantages and disadvantages of, disadvantages of using Excel versus using an online form. Some of these templates, uh, you'll have to contact us to get a copy of it. For example, our SQL template for obvious reasons, because we need to make sure that our SQL database stays secure. So we can't just give you, let you download our template because then you'll be able to connect to our SQL database and uh, you know people could perform malicious activities by doing so. Uh, the same uh, templates are also available directly in your account. So if you were to log in to Frevo here as a designer, you'll see up top there are some templates available. Uh, if you click on this more tab, you'll see that you can install a variety of templates in here. You can narrow them down by finance, search by whatever keyword in there, purchase, and I guess they all have purchase in there. Okay, sorry. Uh, click so by purchase and you'll see that these templates are available to you. Uh, and you can hover over any template and click install and it will install the template for you. And if you, let's just install one. If you were to install one, you'll see that it installs into your cloud account and then it'll run a tour that kind of guides you through how to use this particular template. So we're not gonna worry about that tour for the time being, okay? So uh, these templates are a great way to get started real, really quickly to, to try some um, samples out, to try, uh, see how you can you know, do various things like the straightforward approval workflow, conditional routing, connecting to SQL databases, try out a few other things that, that uh, customers commonly do with Frego. Okay, and the next um, real business requirement is Form design. So it's, you know, forms are a crucial part of every single uh, one of these approval workflows. Typically, that's what it starts with. An employee filling out a purchase requisition or a student filling out a transfer request or a patient filling out uh, the first, you know, first piece, first piece of a uh, appointment making application or referral schedule or something of that sort. The good news with Frevo is that it's very easy to create uh, super sophisticated forms. So there's a very rich palette of controls. Uh, you can create very complex layouts. Uh, you have tables, you have tabs, you have repeats, you have grouping controls, you can have attachments, signatures, approval sections, a variety of styles and layouts, and so on and so forth. So let's take a very quick look at that. So what I'm gonna do here is, let's see. I'm gonna create a really, really uh, simple, um, form here, uh, just to give you a real quick two minute look at how, how you can create a form. So to create a form, you simply click new, 
uh, and we could finish ignoring the rest of this wizard over here. And you come to uh, the form designer, the main screen for the, for the form design aspect of the product. So you'll see that there's a rich palette of controls on the left-hand side, drop-down radio checkbox, text, text area, standard HTML controls, date, email, money, phone, quantity, number, et cetera, reformatted text controls, sections, repeats, tabs, panel, table. These are grouping controls. There's an upload for attachments, signatures, um, and, and a few other controls in the form. So it's a very rich palette. On the left-hand side here down below also is a properties panel that shows you the properties of the particular um, object that happens to be selected. So we'll first change this name to demo form, something like that. You'll see it changes up there immediately. Uh, to create a, uh, a form, simply drag and drop. So I'm gonna take a section, I'm gonna drag it, I'm gonna drop it right there. Um, we'll change its name, just click on it, and it'll change to personal information, and change it to say personal information. And uh, that's about it. Hopefully this drag and drop is rendering smoothly across the GoToWebinar. If not, I assure you that it's very smooth. Uh, just a second, let me just turn off notifications here. Um, now I'm gonna drag a few other things on here. I'll drag a text control, we'll call it first name. Um, and then let's take a look, let's make it a little bit smaller. This is a pretty wide control for first name. So you see that the first name control is selected. It's showing you the properties of that particular control here. Uh, we'll click on the style tab here and you can change its width from one to 12 columns. So we'll set it to four columns wide and you'll see how the control automatically uh, you know, narrows down to four columns. But now if I'm gonna take another control and drop it to the right, you can see as I drag the control, uh, the arrow at the, uh, you know, the indicator there changes to let me know this is gonna go above, to the right, below, etc. So when I drop it to the right, the system's gonna say, well, you're probably trying to create a side-by-side -side layout. And so it's gonna drop it to the right of that first name, but it's automatically going to make its width uh, four columns identical to the previous one. And of course you can, Click on the style tab here and change it as well. So let's drop in an email address here as well. Um, let's take a real quick look at some of these other properties in here. So you can see that there's a, a wide variety of properties available to you. So first thing, the most one of the most common ones is just click required. When you click required, you can see that it changes into a yellow background. What this basically means is that the form cannot be submitted unless this valid, a, a valid uh, email address is entered in this particular field. Of course, you can change, instead of yellow, you can change the, the look and feel to be whatever you want. You can make it uh, orange or, or change the label color or however you want to indicate that this particular field is required. Some of the other properties in here, well, visible and invisible is pretty obvious. You uncheck it and the control will not be visible in the form. Check it, it's visible. Enabled and disabled do the same thing, or uh, when you uncheck enable, the control is disabled and people cannot enter data, data into it. This is for read-only controls or situations where the data is uh, populated automatically. Um, we're not gonna go through every single control in here. Max length is the maximum number of characters. Error message allows you to enter a customized error message. So you can say, please enter a valid email address. Hint is the tool tip. Help allows you to, to um, uh, create context-sensitive help. Something like that. You can enter whatever you want in here, including richly formatted HTML. You see it puts a little info box, and when you click on it, it'll pop up uh, indicating that that's the valid email address. And a placeholder is simply text that shows up in there, and as soon as you start typing, it will disappear. Okay, so there are a number of properties in here. You click on the style tab in here as well. There are a number of other things you can do. You can make the label red, you can make it a little bit bigger, you can make it bold, you can italicize it, et cetera, et cetera. So these are just the most common properties that we find people using uh, in our uh, form designer. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do using more advanced techniques, but this is the most common set of things for this particular control. Now, real quick, I'm gonna, uh, just drag and drop a few other things in here. So for example, you can create a tab view. I'm gonna delete the second tab and stick this in this tab. Uh, let's call the tab personal. Uh, change this tab to incident. Um, and then I'm gonna drop a section in here. And an incident, let's say, has a description and also has a date. 
So let's say an incident has a date and a description, um, both of which are required. And um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in a repeat control in here and drop the incident into the repeat. And you'll see how a min and max has occurred here. Uh, in the properties, I'll change the max to three and you see a plus sign has appeared there, indicating that this is now a repeating control. So you can have more than one incident, uh, but a maximum of three. Let's name it that incidents. Okay, so that's just a quick look at uh, the, the form designer. There's a lot more to this. Um, you can add up upload controls. I can drag and drop a signature control. Um, I can drag and drop a signature control. This just allows me to sign the form at will. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go into every single detail of the form designer here. If you'd like to learn more about the form designer, you can go to our website and under get help videos, there is a detailed form design tutorial video. It's 26 minutes long, and that also connects to a written form design tutorial that you can, you can follow along with it to learn more about the form design. Okay, so to test this form out, you simply click on this uh, little wand icon there, and you'll see that the form is now um, you know, in, in this test mode. You click on the incident, see I can add a second one, I can add a third one, but I can't add a fourth one because I set the maximum number of occurrences to three. Um, I cannot type any junk in here because it doesn't have to be a valid email address. I can type something like this, which is now a valid email address. When I click on the signature, a little thing appears here. You can sign this, uh, you can do the same thing on mobile devices, etc., etc. So um, we don't have time to go into uh, all the details of the form designer. As I indicated, there is a tutorial available to you. Um, getting back to the uh, to the presentation here, the, the point is that it's very easy to create very rich forms and that these rich forms are a crucial aspect of uh, real world business processes. Okay, so let's take a look at the next um, aspect. It's visual these visual business rules. So that's another really important thing. Um, as I indicated, most forms typically have dynamic behavior. Uh, many examples, calculations, initializations, etc. We'll take a look at a few of these, but you don't want to be able to, uh, or you don't want to require people to know coding or JavaScript or be programmers in order to, in order to create this display or, or this dynamic behavior. And that's where Frevo's visual business rules or visual rule builder comes in. It's really easy to use. It's a wizard-based uh, rule designer. You might need, uh, might use expressions and functions very similar to Excel. If you know how to use Excel, you'll probably use the, uh, the visual rule builder. The good news, no demo, I mean, no coding required at all. Now, we do have a demo video of this. Once again, on that videos and tutorials page, you can look, take a look at the six-minute demo of it. Uh, but I'm going to create a couple of examples to uh, show you right here. So I've got a form that I created in advance. Uh, it's basically a quick, purchase, simple purchase order form. It's got a date, some employee information. I've added a table here, and the table has uh, item, quantity, unit price, subtotal, and brand total. And then we've got a signature with a date. So let's create a few rules just to show you how easy it is to put in some dynamic behavior, uh, literally a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna click plus here. First thing to do is click on this button to get to the rules tab. Click plus to create a new rule. And now I'm gonna say, let's let's start with initializing the form. So I'm gonna initialize the form. Um, I'm gonna click on this button here to run the rule builder. When I click that, up comes the rule builder. Since this is initialization, I'm gonna check this box. We have no conditions. So when the form loads, we wanna initialize it. What do I wanna do? I wanna set the PO date. Uh, to this type today. And uh, I want to do a few other things. I want to set the last name to user last name. So now what this does is it sets the, the last name to the last name of the logged in user based on the user's login credentials. I guess I should have. Normally, I would have done first name. And so I'm just basically setting up the form so that a uh, number of things here are automatically initialized. Okay, 
So we know who's logged in. We know your first name, your last name, your email address. We know today's date. Why make the user type it in? Click finish here and you'll see how the rule now displays saying, uh, when this rule runs, the PO will, the, the date will be initialized, the first and last name, et cetera, will all be initialized. Again, click on this little magic wand over here uh, and you'll see when the form loads that there it is, the PO date, first name, last name, and email address are automatically initialized uh, based on the logged in user. Now we also saw that there's a sub, there's a table here, there are subtotals and grand totals. We don't want the user to be computing those manually. So let's do that um, in, using a business rule. So calculate subtotals. So when I want to calculate subtotals, I have some conditions. Uh, you cannot calculate a subtotal unless you have a price. So I say when the unit price is filled and when the quantity is also filled. So when, when I have a, a unit price and a quantity, I want to set the subtotal to the, the product of the unit price and the quantity. So I'm going to type unit price and I'm going to multiply it by quantity. And that's it. Um, you know, the fact that there's a table, there might be multiple rows, there could be 10 rows in there and 10 different subtotals that this needs to be in some sort of repeating loop. Uh, all of that code is not required at all. Uh, what I do need to do is if I don't have a unit price or a quantity, I just want to set the subtotal to empty. Because, you know, it's possible that I enter a, oops, it's possible that I delete a unit price from, from a row, I want the subtotal to zero out in that kind of scenario. And that's all there is to it. So uh, if you wanted to see what the, uh, what the rule builder is doing behind the scenes, you can, you can click on this rule code over here. And you can see that behind the scenes is actually a for loop and all kinds of code being generated that's taking into account uh, the fact that this is actually a repeating uh, element inside a table. There may be multiple sub subtotals, but you don't have to worry about it. This piece is something anyone can easily do. Uh, let's add a quick, quickly add a rule to calculate the grand total as well. So in this case, there's no condition. We always want to calculate a grand total. So, and let's set the grand total. What do we want to do? We want to set it to the sum of the subtotals. So we just type sum subtotal, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Once again, behind the scenes, there's a bunch of code that's being generated, but from a rule builder perspective, from the end, of, from the end user perspective, there, it's really simple. Uh, and I'm gonna create one last rule in here, which is to, to quickly show you how you can set a date, for example, based on something being happening. So specifically, let's set the signature date. So I'm gonna run this builder, I'm gonna create a condition here that says when the signature is is filled, that means I've entered something in the signature. I'm going to set the date to today. Otherwise, I'm going to set the date to empty. That's it. So, you know, we, we created these four pieces of dynamic behavior. Maybe it took us a couple of minutes to do it. Uh, but there's no programming required. It's really easy. Anybody, uh, you know, who knows how to use Excel or uh, essentially run some sort of wizard, really, uh, can very easily create these forms with super dynamic behavior. Uh, let's give, click on that magic wand again there to try it out. And we'll see over here that the date and the employee information is filled out. You'll see as I enter something in here, uh, quantity and price, you'll see that the subtotal and the grand total was calculated. Uh, and uh, the grand total is being calculated. If I happen to delete a row, you'll see the grand total automatically gets updated. You see that the signature date is empty in here. When I put in a signature there, it's automatically putting in today's date. So using these kinds of business rules, you can create a very dynamic behavior. So you can start showing and hiding things. You can uh, cal perform calculations, initialize things very quickly. Uh, and ultimately also reduce errors, reduce data entries. People don't have to type things unnecessarily. They're more likely to complete forms uh, and submit them uh, without any mistakes and, and uh, in a timely manner. So reduce data entry, reduce effort, and it's very, very easy to do. Okay.
Um, that's really just a, a, a look, a quick look at a few business rules. There's a lot more to these business rules in Frevo. Uh, you can create hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of business rules of functions. Uh, palette of functions available to you is extremely rich. And then finally, um, while I say no coding, um, if you do want to code, if you have some very specific complex um, requirement that requires coding or maybe you need to connect to a custom web service on the back end, um, that option is available to you. It's not that you can't, um, if you know how to code and you, and you have a specific requirement, you want to write, put, write some JavaScript code, you, you can certainly do that as well. Okay, so you can drag and drop to create these forms. You can very easily use visual uh, or the visual rule builder to create dynamic um, forms with visual behavior. Um, let's move on to some workflow routing. So you can also do this, um, these forms in most cases, as I mentioned, they need to be routed to people uh, for signatures, for comments, for whatever the case may be. Uh, the reality is that in the real world, these, this routing can get super complex. So you may need to route to a specific manager. So if I'm logged in as a sheesh, you may want, you may have to route my request to my manager, not, not just to any old manager. You may need to route to a role. So perhaps it does need to be routed to the VP, to, a, to some or the CFO, or somebody with a specific role. The routing may be conditional. So uh, I may only need to route to the VP if the amount is greater than $10,000. Otherwise, you can skip that particular step. Really, really common example. Routing might need to be anonymous, so there are situations where the, the uh, as I mentioned, the uh, person to whom it is routed does not have a login or an account on the system, and so you may want to route to the, uh, using an anonymous email so that the customer, uh, the person on the other side can simply click a link in that email and uh, access the workflow. Uh, notifications, escalations, rejections, all important aspects. I mean, if something's routed to me, I want to be notified. That's all built into Frevo. Escalations allow me to control what happens if I don't respond. Let's say I get a, get a request to approve something. I don't actually do anything on it for 48 hours. The system can remind me. The system can then delegate to someone else. Um, I may want to reject it back uh, to the previous uh, the, the person who performed the, uh, the previous step in the workflow saying, I need you to correct X, Y, Z. That's fully available in Frevo. You can save and uh, save and load, which means you can save partially completed workflows and come back to them later. Uh, a wide variety of things that you can do with Frevo as well. So let's take a real quick look at how to do that. So now I've created a PO form here. So it has it's very similar to the previous one. Uh, the rules that we that we just created are already in place. I've also added a section for manager approval here. So I added a section. The things got comments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the security tab here and I'm going to say text signature required and click on must sign. And you'll see that a little sign this section box has appeared down below. We'll take a look at what that, what that box is. That's now going to be a different type of signature. It's a digital signature that locks this uh, particular uh, section. Um, it, it creates a real PKI encrypted signature based on the contents of the section the identity of the person who signed it, as well as the time and date that it was signed. So let's say this particular form and create a workflow out of it. So I'm gonna click on this flows tab here, and I'm gonna click, click plus to create a new workflow. Um, you'll see this launches the flow designer. So I'll just call this demo PO flow, or something like that. There's a start and an end over here. There's uh, there are a, a list of forms that was available to you. I'm going to take this PO form and drag it and drop it in here. So what you see here is I've got my um, workflow. It's it's a start. It goes to the PO form and then then ends. Now of course in this case we want to now route it to the manager. So I'm going to click that and there's a little um, link icon over here. I'm going to click on that and what that does is it creates a copy of this PO form as the next step. Um, and this is an example of uh, sort of a clipboard type of routing where there's a single clipboard. I've got a, a form or set of forms on it. I fill in the top half of it and then literally take the same form and hand it on to the manager who fills in the step that uh, fills in the, the section of the form that is his or her approval section. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go in here and we'll click that uh, gear icon. Sorry, there's, when you click on it, a little gear icon appears here. Uh, since this is a copy of the form here, 
If I clicked on this form, you'll see there are additional things. I can edit it, I can download it, etc. But since this is a copy, uh, you can't take any of those actions. All you can do is configure it. So I'm going to click on the gear icon, and you'll see a little wizard pop up. Uh, and this lets you configure all the various properties of a particular flow step. So the first thing we want to do is change its name. So let's call it manager so that it, that it has a manager uh, since this step is being performed by the manager. We can change its label. So we can call it approve purchase order. And that's just the label that will appear at the bottom of the workflow. There's essentially the submit button that appears at the bottom of the workflow. Um, there are several other properties in here that we won't go into the details of. When I click on assignment here, this now allows me to specify who the form, uh, who this, who, who's going to perform this step. I can assign it to a specific user, I can assign it to a specific role, or I can assign it to an email address. This is that anonymous routing that I talked about earlier. So in this case, we want to we want to assign it to a uh, to my manager. So how am I going to assign it to a particular uh, person? In this case, the technique I'm going to use over here is I've got a control in the form called manager ID, and I've, I'll, 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 take, I'll, I'll give you a quick look at that. Essentially, that control will be automatically initialized by a business rule. Just like we initialize the first name and last name, you can also initialize the control with, the, with, the, with, the, with my manager. And then I'm simply going to basically choose that control in here. So what this is going to do is say, if this step will route to the user that's in that the value of that particular control. We'll, I'll, we'll take a look, it'll, it'll become a little clearer once, once we run this. Um, what's the email, uh, when, when, the, when, when it routes to a manager, you can send an email notification, so we can change the subject and the message of that email right here. So you could say whatever, something like that. And, and, and the only other thing in here is uh, you can put in you can use templates in here as well. So you can basically say, hmm. I don't know why I don't have a first name in here. Okay, well, I don't know why I'm not seeing those templates in here. I must not have, must not have the right ones. But you can actually use controls for the form inside this message as well. Okay, so. You can basically assign it to a user, you can assign it to a role, you can assign it to an email address. You can specify the subject or the, as you can essentially configure the subject as well as the underlying message of the notification email that's sent. And then under the messages tab here, you can also specify what control, you know, what appears in the user's task list. So again, I can basically say, I don't know, something like this. The pending message controls what the user sees when the employee submits the form. You want to say, okay, what do I want to say? Your PO was sent to the manager or approval, something like this. Uh, the history message controls what's in the audit trail. On the rejection tab, you can configure the rejection, um, you know, uh, whether whether or not this, this person can reject the workflow of the previous step or whether further downstream people can reject it to here and you can also customize the message. We'll talk about preconditions in a second. Um, I mentioned escalations. You can use, um, you can add escalations here um, just by clicking this add escalation and, and going in here. I'm not gonna actually do it. Uh, so, you know, so perform within, you know, 48 hours, something like that. Um, if I don't do that, you can basically specify an action. So you can notify, uh, you can notify the, 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 the user, essentially this serves as a reminder. So it's very easy to add escalations, and there are several other things that you can do as well, such as send an email, connect to a, to a, to a third-party web service, uh, from geolocation on, that, on this step, and so on and so forth. So what we've done over here, there are, again, a, a large number of properties that can be configured for each workflow step. We don't have time to go through all of them. So the main things we did are we changed its name, we changed its label, we assigned it to a particular user, we changed a couple of steps in here, and set up some messages as well. So what this means, you'll see the basic um, uh, information available over here. Essentially tells you that this task will be assigned to the user or manager ID. The PO form, this step also has a set of properties. Not much we need to change over here. We'll just call it send to manager. Um, click submit here. 
quickly taking a look at the at the at the actual form in here you can see that i do have a control in here called manager id and you can also see that in the initialization of the form i'm setting the manager to the resource manager id so let's run this form um, a flow i should say uh, when you see when i run this flow over here the same stuff it's automatically initialized i'll call it red digits here 13 i've got a subtotal i'm going to provide a date in here Oh, I should have made this section invisible. Sorry, I, I messed up. I forgot, I forgot to create a rule here. I'm going to start to do now. That's why we test these things. So one thing I forgot is that we need to create a rule that hides that section on the employee step. So I'm going to click plus here to create a rule. Um, so let's say on manager step, something like that. Click run builder here. I'm going to add a condition here and say when the current step is manager what i want to do in the current step is manager i want the manager of google section to be visible and i also want the manager of google step to be required but if it is not manager meaning it's before manager in this particular case since i only have two sections i want it to be hidden otherwise and, and i also want it to be optional so what, what we basically done here is said when the current step is the manager, set that section to visible and required, otherwise hide it, make it optional. So now in this case, when I click test over here, now that I'm on the employee step, we should no longer see the manager. Um, we're on this first step called PO form. Yeah, you can see that the manager section is no longer visible. So let's again type in. ourselves a subtotal click on this authorized signature over here you see that the date uh, gets filled in now when i click send you'll see that your po was sent to the manager for approval so the manager um, via their email will get a notification um, let's just quickly log into Google as the manager And you'll see that that, uh, that workflow is sitting here in my task list. It was just sent uh, a couple of seconds ago. When I click on the play button here, you'll see how the, the manager approval step is now visible. I can put in my comments here, looks good to me. I can click on sign this section and I can approve the purchase order. And now the purchase order has been cleared out of my task list as the manager, okay? So it's very easy to create this type of routing in Trego as well. Now, one other thing that's super common also is, is uh, routing conditionally. This is like uh, you know, practically every production workflow requires some sort of conditional routing as well. So we'll add, a, we'll, we'll very quickly take a look at how to do it. Again, click on the settings over here, click on precondition. Let's say in my company, uh, I only need to route uh, if the amount is greater than $1,000. Okay. So otherwise, otherwise there's no need to route this. So I'm going to click on edit here. I'm going to click add. Again, you'll see it's a very it's the same rule builder type of visual rule builder scenario. You don't need to learn anything more. So we're going to say if the grand total is more than a literal value of a thousand dollars. Otherwise, skip this step. Submit, and you'll see that the the visual appearance of it changes so that the amount exceeds one thousand dollars. We go to the we go to the manager, otherwise it, it bypasses the manager. The last thing I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna add a quick display message. And this is just a message that the, that the, um, that the end user sees when the workflow completes. So in this case, let's quickly try it out. Unlike the previous time when the workflow was routed to the manager, for approval, you'll see at this point, if I do the same thing, uh, since the amount is less than $1,000, the workflow will simply terminate, uh, saying your PO was approved. Whereas if I uh, run the same thing again, if I run the same thing again, except I buy a lot more red widgets, uh, we'll see that the subtotal there is greater than $1,000. In this case, uh, your PO is going to be sent to the manager for approval instead of being completed, and it will appear here on that manager's task list. 
Okay, so that's a quick look at how easy it is to create these workflows. So these are the sort of most important business requirements. You can design very, very powerful, sophisticated forms. You can create easily create dynamic behavior. You can very easily route visually. You can also create dynamic forms very easily. We talked about this. Uh, we don't have time to go into how to create these. But again, if you go to this purchase order templates page on our website, it's under solutions purchase order, you'll see that you can basically click on this online template here. If you clicked on that, you'll see it's very similar to the one I just showed you, but the product, uh, the product pick list comes from a SQL database. It's initialized from that database. When you pick a product, the unit price goes back to the database and pulls the unit price from that database. So that's just an example. There are, there are a lot of examples we have here. Again, on our website, if you click on get help examples and scroll down to database connector, there are a couple of uh, many examples here, a couple of examples here of the most common scenarios. Here's a master detail form. When I select a customer, you'll see how the bottom part of the form automatically pre-fills with all the details of that customer, change the customer name, the, the bottom half of the form changes automatically. Good news is zero programming required for this. Um, and it's very, very easy to do. And it's a very common use case that a lot of customers use for it. Um, the other things, uh, some of the other business requirements, Fravo also works with SharePoints as well as a variety of content management systems, M-Files, Xerox, DocuFlex, DocuPace, several others. Uh, at the end of the day, you're, you're creating an automated workflow with electronic forms. You want to write these things to, you, you know, you don't want to print the, uh, the resulting documents out and just save them into a filing cabinet. That wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. So most customers want to save these things electronically as well. Of course, Fravo does come with a built-in repository. You can search through your submissions, find them, look up the documents and so on and so forth. But the reality is that most enterprises, they do have an existing SharePoint uh, infrastructure or, or use some sort of document management system. And it's very easy using Fravo to integrate with these systems so that you can write your documents, your data and, and files electronically, index them automatically without the need for any data entry or errors. Fravo also supports single sign-on. It's very easy to integrate with your existing uh, identity management system. It integrates directly with Active Directory. Uh, and also through via SAML, uh, you can integrate with a variety of SAML providers such as Google Apps, Okta, uh, Fravo also integrates with Microsoft's Azure, uh, Azure AD in the cloud. Uh, and we have a lot of customers doing uh, all of these things essentially. Okay, so that's another common business requirement. Forms and workflows automatically just work on smartphones, tablets, and desktops. They're responsive, nothing you need to do. Um, you can customize them if you want. So for example, you, you can drag and drop. Uh, we kind of took a, took a quick look at that as well. If you looked at these uh, any any form in here, you can see there's a page break in here. So you can decide, I'm going to stick this page break right here. I don't know, anywhere. I'm going to put in a page break here. And you can see it's either a phone or tablet. Um, and what this basically does is that on if you uncheck tablet, for example, you can say, that this form will be broken into multiple pages just on a phone versus uh, and be, be, in, be a single page form on the tablet. So you can custom do a, uh, some degree of customization on a phone uh, for mobile devices. But the other thing is that the forms are already crafted for mobile usability. They look natural. Uh, the controls will behave as you expect them to behave on a mobile device. Uh, you know, the calendar and the, uh, the data, the date controls will use the calendar calendar system on your phone. Uh, they also have you know, little things like larger buttons, the controls are slightly larger, it's, you know, so people uh, can click on them more easily with their thumbs or our fingers, I should say, not thumbs, uh, and they're easier to fill out and complete on mobile devices. PDF generation is also built in. This is, as I mentioned, much more common on new employee onboarding rather than purchase order approvals. Uh, but there are two ways in which you can generate PDFs from Fravo. One is automatically, the system just generates PDF documents automatically directly from the form itself. Uh, nothing for you to do. Uh, you can customize things like the header, the font, the footer, the spacing, margins, and so on and so forth off the generated PDF. You can put your logo on it, et cetera. 
Um, the other thing you can do also, there are situations like employee onboarding where you can't use the form PDF. You have to use a W-4 or I-9 that's specified by the federal or state government. And in that scenario, we have a drag and drop visual mapper that you can use to map form fields directly to your custom PDFs. You can drag and drop, uh, you, you can map any form data to a PDF, including signatures. And the nice thing here, particularly for new hire onboarding, is we have many customers who told us that their new hire onboarding packet had grown to 30 or 40 forms, uh, and a lot of that data has just been, is just duplicate data. That's kind of where they come from. Again, you can find a video for this under on our website, Get Help Videos. Uh, you can find a uh, video on custom PDF generation. It's just five and a half minutes long. Uh, take a look at the video. It'll show you how you can um, start with a form or flow map fields to a custom PDF. I think it uses a government W4 in this case. Okay, so that's PDF generation. Uh, and finally, operational reports. So these things are available in Frevo. They're, they're um, currently available only under uh, only for users that have, have some specific roles, but uh, we're very close to releasing an uh, update to Frevo that makes, makes, uh, yeah, makes this much more accessible to users. You can control specific users or roles, people, you can, you can essentially specify who has access to these reports. Now, based on these reports, you can come up with, uh, you know, analysis such as, you know, we started 100 POs last month, 62 of them completed, 54 were approved, eight were denied, 31 of those happened to require VP approval because the amount was greater than $1,000. Of the active ones, here's the number that are waiting for manager approval, VP, PO, et cetera. The VP approval typically on average seems to take many more days, takes days, whereas everyone else approves in hours. And then when you do a deeper dive, you can say, well, 25 of them were quickly approved, but the other six took a lot longer. Maybe you'll take a look at the other six and say, why did those take a lot longer? Maybe the VP was supposed to reject them, or maybe she had to out of band, make a phone call or send an email address and request additional information or figure out why this PO was coming to her. And you know, understand how the what are the parameters that are controlling the, the optimization of the workflow and, and, and improve it? Uh, obviously, it's not just statistical data that, that's important. You, you need to look at the workflow itself. And most importantly, uh, to really optimize workflows and increase productivity, you need to talk to users. Uh, so this is just uh, one of the parameters, one of the really important pieces of information that can help you and analyze workflows and optimize them uh, along with uh, user feedback. So that's kind of a quick look at, uh, at some of the features in Frevo that allow you to uh, optimize, uh, allow you to create a purchase order. Using a purchase order as an example, of course, the same applies to new hire onboarding, H, other HR processes, patient processing, student um, related uh, applications, and so on and so forth. They all have similar business requirements. You need to be able to create sophisticated forms. You need to make them dynamic. You need to be able to route conditionally. Uh, you need to be able to integrate with uh, third-party systems as well as your authentication providers. You need them to work on mobile devices, generate PDF documents, look at operational reports so you can optimize these workflows. And over and above that, there are a number of other things that you can also do with Trevo, which we simply don't have time to go to. We looked at several resources on our web, uh, uh, already on our website. Under uh, on our website, there's solutions. Under solutions, there's procurement process as well as purchase order process. Specifically, procurement process goes into a little more detail. Involves not just purchase order but invoice approvals and so on and so forth as well. And we also have HR as well as a number of examples of other forms and workflows that you can automate with Frevo. So. Uh, you know, take a look at the video demos. We have a number of case studies on our website as well, as well as examples that I mentioned earlier. Um, you can certainly sign up for a free trial account, 30-day trial account, and it's fully functional. Uh, we'd love for you to contact us, and thank you very much for listening. You can contact us by sending an email at info at frevo.com uh, frevo or simply by clicking the contact link uh, right here at the top of our website. We'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, there's a phone number listed there as well. Give us a call anytime. Thank you very much um, um, for listening. Uh, I think uh, 
uh, Anika, are there any, I guess nobody has any questions because uh, we covered, a, uh, we tried to cover a lot of detail. I apologize if this was too fast. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please do reach out to us by email, contact link, or by phone. Thank you very much once again for attending. Bye-bye.